and welcome you all in chemistry drive with Ravneet. So today I'm going to continue with my video series of UV visible spectroscopy. This video is very very important and you need to watch till end. This video is on sample handling. What if you know that these are the instruments with which I need to work. This is a principle. This is its uh, application. But if you don't know how to handle the sample, what are the precautions that I need to take into account while uh, observing my sample solution? So there is no, I think, uh, use of uh, learning the UV visible spectroscopy. So very important is sample handling. So in this video, I'm going to also show you that how you're going to take the spectra of any sample. So must watch this video. Video. So let's start. First of all, you can see here. So I have written that the UV visible spectra is mostly recorded for. Very important. You should know that for what kind of sample I'm gonna take the uh, the spectra. So that is mostly the vapor phase or in solution phase. So mostly in the solution phase. Then what is that instrument called in which you gonna take your sample? That is your cubits. So here this is a picture of cubits. So we have the different cubits for different uh, sample sample analysis so this is called cell or qubit in which we handle the liquid sample so it can either be uh, rectangular in shape or even cylindrical in shape for like a uv region the mostly which cells which we people use are made up of quartz or fused silica and uh, whereas fused glass is used in the visible region. So this you need to note down because we have the number of uh, like uh, qubits available in our lab. So you should know that you are uh, taking you are analyzing your sample in which region you are analyzing it in the visible region or you are analyzing it in the uv region so you need to pick up that uh, cell that qubit from the cell, from your rack. Then uh, is the thing is to uh, clean the qubit so for there should be no fingerprints uh, should be present on the cell so surface of absorption uh, cells that must be cleaned properly and uh, the cleaning it is done by washing with distilled water or with the like dilute alcohol acetone and moreover the conditions three conditions that you need to take into account uh, before like that contain the sample for for sample analysis firstly that they must be uniform in construction the thickness must be constant and surfaces facing the incident light must be optically flat because it's all about the light passing through the sample so the thickness should be proper the thickness should be constant and then the material should be inert to the solvent the material of construction okay the material of which this quartz is made that should be inert it shouldn't react with any solvent or your sample then they must transmit light of wavelength used so very important whatever light pass through it so this material it should be able to transmit that light so here you can see how i am cleaning the qubit very important to, rather than tissue rather than filter paper better to use cloth of this kind we we often have this uh, we often have seen this kind of cloth uh, when we use specs and all so that cloth is much better to clean the qubit so use that cloth and uh, here you can see i have put the sample in my qubit and you can see i haven't overfill the qubit so don't overfill your qubit and don't think that if I overfill, I will get the better spectra. So don't overfill. Okay. So like here I have taken one ml maximum volume. So you can take up to that. So don't overfill your qubit. And the next thing is you take into account is use different pipettes. Because I have seen the students have habit, they use same pipette, same droppers for different for different samples. So that leads to the cross contamination. So, but this kind of uh, uh, practical when you are doing this kind of observation is a bit high level observation. So you need to take into account all the precautions. So use different pipettes for each sample to avoid any kind of cross contamination. Then come to the next is the solvent and solution. So now we have clear idea that this is my instrument. These are the qubits which I need to use. Then come to the solvents which I am going to use during my practical, during my observation. So very, very carefully you need to choose the solvent in UV spectroscopy.
so because the whole observation it depends upon the solvent choice you are choosing polar solvent you are using non polar solvent we are also going going to do the detail later on about the solvent effect about the effect of solvents about the polar non polar solvent all this in the next videos so do watch video series to get uh, all the you know basic clarity of this uv visible spectroscopy a good solvent you can say that uh, it should not ab absorb uv in the uv region if your solvent absorb then how you can get the spectra of your sample so it's very important that a good solvent you always get question also for one or two marks in the examination that what are the characteristics of good solvent so it shouldn't get absorbed in the uv region in the same region as the substance which you are observing so it doesn't absorb in that region and the, usually the solvents that do not contain the conjugated system so mostly the solvent uh, who don't have the conjugated system are mostly suitable for this purpose and uh, then second criteria for good solvent is that uh, uh, it is its effect on the fine structure of an absorption band then uh, non polar solvents uh, you know that they do not form any kind of hydrogen bonding with the solute so the spectrum of solute it is closely approximate the spectrum that would be produced in the gaseous state in which the fine structure is often observed so you can select accordingly whether you need uh, to check the hydrogen bonding takes place there or not so like polar solvent or the go hydrogen bonding between the solute and the solvent so the fine structure disappears so when there is no hydrogen bonding so uh, mostly the fine structure is, you can easily observe that in the spectra so mostly 95% uh, ethanol and uh, n hexane these are the common may you get one more question name to solvent that most used so that are the 95% ethanol and n hexane they are commonly used as solvent and uh, absolute ethanol uh, uh, you know is usually not recommended absolute ethanol why because it contain traces of benzene which absorb in this region so non polar solvent like uh, hexane cyclohexane so they are also usually uh, used when the fine vibrational structure in the spectrum is desired so these are few points that you need into uh, take into account while you are going to observe your spectra and uh, now let's let's uh, study how we gonna do the practical how we gonna take the sample how we'll observe our uv visible spectroscopy so very important is you should download the software first of all in your uh, pc to get the spectra because the whole our uh, uv visible spectro photo run on the software so you must have the knowledge of that too so let's start so firstly you need to open the software whatever you have downloaded in your laptop just open it for visible uv visible spectroscopy demonstration then firstly you need to set your visible spectral range and that is 800 to 400 nanometer so here i'm just setting it to 800 to 400 nanometer and after that uh, you need to set the baseline for better results so very important that results should be accurate so you should have to be mastery in this so then after that it will go for preparation of a blank so for preparing a blank what i'm gonna do is like here you can see i have the three beakers so this is just to uh, for my disposal of waste and here i'm just uh, rinsing my cuvette with the blank solution it's very important firstly you need to rinse your cuvette with blank solution use the pipette uh, separately for each sample to avoid any kind of cross contamination and after doing this you need to wipe the clear sides use the clean tissue to clear this and clear it properly then once you clear it you can see that it is very transparent on both sides so after that you need to add two-third of the height of cuvette your solution blank solution and uh, do not overflow it i already told you do not overflow your cuvette so that uh, the properly the light should pass through the solution so once you have filled it again i'm just cleaning it see the precautions or the i'm handling the apparatus so it's very important the handling is very important for accurate results so once you do it 
so this is ready to set the baseline so blanking the instrument so how, how i'm gonna do i'm just opening my uv spectro photometer so slide the compartment place in the this uh, cubit holder make sure your transparent side facing your left to right and your translucent side front and back so then close it to avoid any kind of contamination and so here I am setting the baseline. So once your baseline is set, so that means your instrument is ready to examine your test solution now. So it's time to remove the blank. And again, I am just opening the compartment and taking out my cuvette. Close the lid. So very important is to close it. Why? To avoid any kind of contamination. So now remove the blank and reload the test solution. How are you going to prepare the sample for that? you need to just take the cuvette and here you can see i'm using the separate droppers for my test solution so i'm putting my test solution and the cuvette with the help of dropper so after that uh, once you put the test solution you need to again add the solvent in order to dilute it so why i'm diluting it as you know the more the transparent the solution is so better results better the light light will be passed through the solution and uh, you can observe the good spectra in that case so you can see this how transparent the solution is so mix it well and then again you need to place it in the compartment and run the software your experiment as you do before so here i'm placing my test solution which is mixed with the proper solvent whatever i need to use so as you can see here i'm starting so you can give it uh, any name under uh, which you want to save your file so you can save it the data will be saved you can also observe it later on it will be in the history so you can see the spectra as absorbance versus wavelength so you can see clearly the spectra there so once you have taken the spectra it's time to cleaning up you have to clean the cuvette the instruments which you are using in your practical in your observation so i'm taking out my cuvette containing my test solution closing the compartment so just throwing my solution which i have observed in the disposal beaker so i need to clean it a number of time with my solvent so very important uh, is to clean the cuvette uh, so that the next student who is coming for the observation of uh, his or her sample do not do any kind of mistake okay so i'm going to clean it number of time wipe it properly by using your tissue or cloth very soft cloth which you have and then place it so these are the things that you need to keep in mind while doing the uv visible spectroscopy so i hope this is clear to you now